and running. Maybe they don't want to be up and running really quickly, but your job is to get them up and running. So let's say that now I go back to work, I say, hey, I lost a laptop, I need a newer one, and by the way, make it better than the last one I had, which is really old. So you give them a new laptop, and I've got this new laptop set up here. I'm demonstrating here by bringing up the profile editor that the user's me, Mark, has never logged into this machine. Here are the profiles installed on the machine, this machine, which are the admin profiles and the default profile. I'm going to log out and log back in for the first time as me. And this is what I would do when I got that laptop handed to me by you. And what's going to happen now is, like I said, those different pieces of data or state are going to get reconstituted on the fly. Folder redirection is going to make my business data, that Excel spreadsheet, available to me. App V is going to make Office virtually instantly available to me. And roaming user profiles means that my settings, which include where, the place where I put my taskbar and the recycle bin, are right back where I left them. And let's go verify that my spreadsheet's there. And you can see this is going to take a few seconds to actually stream enough of Excel down to actually launch it. But compare this with the, let's just say, more significant time it would take to install Office on this machine. And it's quite a safe. And when it comes up, hopefully my chart's going to be there so I didn't lose any work. And there it is. Back in business just within a few minutes. I want to talk about one last thing. Virtualization is getting a hotter and hotter area. Have you seen I've been talking about virtualization for application compatibility, VDI is becoming really hot. Uh, Ian will talk about Hyper-V and machine consolidation on servers to save costs. And so more and more of you are going to be working with VHDs, which are the underlying storage format for a virtual machine. They're virtual disks. And you're going to be manipulating them to modify them to do offline patches to them, because we support offline patching in Windows. You're going to be uh, reading them, maybe running antivirus against them to make sure there's no viruses in them. And in the past, you've had to use external tools to be able to manage VHDs, to be able to crack them open and edit them. So what we've decided is, because they're becoming so important, you're going to be working with them so much, we wanted to make it really easy to, man to manage those, virtual, uh, those VHDs. So we've baked in VHD support right into the operating system natively. And that's what I'm going to show you right here by firing up disk management and showing you how I can surface a VHD as if it was a, a real disk to the operating system. I'm going to go to the Action button and say Attached VHD. And I'm going to navigate to a VHD that I've got which is actually an enterprise client VHD. So it's Windows Enterprise Client. And you can create one of those VHDs yourself with the Wake and the, the uh, OEM pre-installation kit. The tools inside of there let you uh, publish a WIM into a VHD file. So now that I've got it attached, I can open it and browse it just like any other application, any other, sorry, volume. And I'm going to navigate into it and show you how I can even modify it by, here, let me do the shake and bake. There. I'm going to zoom it into it, because zoom it's that little tool that I've been using to annotate the screen and zoom in. And I know all the users on my network are going to want zoom it, so I copy it into the public folder so that they all have it available to them. And there it is. But even cooler than that, not just being able to surface existing VHDs, we have the ability to create VHDs. And I'm going to demonstrate that for you. And at the same time, show you uh, something that might blow your mind, because it did when I thought about it the first time. I'm going to create a, a demo VHD here. I'm going to make it small, 50 megabytes. And I'm going to make it dynamically expanding, as opposed to fixed. And that means that the VHD is just going to store the data that's actu that I actually write into the VHD. It's not going to be that fixed. It doesn't need to be. And now it shows up as a raw disk window, so I need to partition it. And now that I've got a partition that I can format, I'm going to put NTFS volume on there. And now I've got NTFS VHD. I'm going to open it up. And what I'm going to show you is blow my mind. And it also stresses out the VHD developers because they're afraid that this is going to show up a bug, actually. Uh, nervous when I do this, no matter how many times I do it. I'm going to copy the VHD into itself. And you can see here that the VHD, 
started at about 10 megabytes and is growing as, we, as, that, as that data is being copied into it. So because it started out at about 10 megabytes, that means 10 megabytes of data is copying into it, so it's going to end up at about 20 megabytes, and I've just copied it into itself. So that's really cool, too, the ability to create VHDs, but I think the thing that really I think is cool, and I use it on a day-to-day -day basis, is we've also made it possible for Windows to boot directly from a VHD. And that's useful for me because as we've got these internal builds of Windows 7 and Server 2008, without having to repartition my disk and install the uh, copy of Windows into it, I simply download the VHDs that we produce in the build lab every day. my boot configuration at it, create a new entry in my boot menu, and boot Windows right into the VHD. And if you're interested in seeing that in action, uh, I'm going to be giving a talk on virtualization and VHD enhancements later this week where I'm doing the whole thing booted into Server 2008 R2 with Hyper-V on and inside of it, booted from a, a VHD. So with that, I want to turn it over to Bill. I want to thank you very much, and I uh, hope to see you later this week. I'm doing a bunch of sessions. Mark. So All right. Thanks, Mark. That's great. All right. So what are people saying about it? Most important thing is the feedback you give us this week, the feedback that you're giving us on the beta. Uh, but we're getting, we're getting some very, very good feedback from on the product in the marketplace from beta testers, from the press. But there are two elephants in the room. And I want to talk a little bit about two elephants. One is how to think about application compatibility and where we're at with that. And when are we going to ship? You guys want to talk about that? Yeah. yeah. All right, we'll talk about that. Okay, application compatibility. This was key feedback from you again and again. Okay, I like the advancements. You needed to make those architectural changes around to support security advancements that we need you to make but compatibility was tough and as we approached the Windows 7 product one of the things that and you saw it in the in the video making sure that as we're making any changes making sure that those changes have minimal impact to the compatibility of applications from Windows Vista to Windows 7